Uh, also, I had a lot of really great collaborators working on this play, and I will say it is a play. Um, above everything else, it is a play. Um, a lot of people say, oh, it's a party, or I think there's this thing in um, America specifically where people don't like plays, like a certain, like theater people like plays, but basically everybody else, they have this idea that they don't like plays, and, and so um, when they try to like convince people to come to something that they love, um, which a lot of people are loving this, is that, that they'll say, um, oh, it's not a play. Don't worry. It's not a play. <laughs> it's a play. Um, it's also a party. It's also an experiment. It's also uh, happening and stuff, but it is a play. So all the directors are from San Francisco for this production and all the performers and all the technicians, everybody, I mean, everybody's from here. A few of the designers are from other places. Um, but, uh, but basically, this is a San Francisco production, a Bay Area production. And um, and the New York production was our New York production, and and it is just shocking how similar and how different they are the two productions um, in in glorious ways. Um, they, they similar in that it's the same play, so of course certain things are gonna um, work in a certain way. And I really tried to not say you know lead people down the path of this is how we did it in New York, so this is how we're gonna do it here. You know, I tried to like just open it up and let people create it for themselves um, but there are certain things that are almost exactly like it was in New York and and a nothing even even a costume for um, the baby's breath the the two different costume designers used the exact same material and and Lindsay Davis who did the costumes here didn't see the costumes in New York so and didn't see photos purposely didn't and he just chose the same fabric he designed it completely differently but he chose the same fact. So little things like that are really interesting, like the zeitgeist is kind of floating around. I think that the show backstage is actually um, almost as interesting as the show on stage because of uh, what what has to happen when there's uh, 36 people in the building. And uh, it's, it's such a large show with all the... We have, I think there's a total of eight stage hands who are doing all the work which are just I mean it's just incredible including the two stage managers that we have and they, they're they're just running around non-stop everywhere like fastening things zipping things um, throw sometimes we even get them on stage to get, you know give boas and do strange things and um, there are flowers coming down from the sky and and um, changeovers are, are are just kind of a choreography in themselves everyone doing their job to change everything over in the in the short amount of time that we have you know the audience is all outside eating for 15 to 20 minutes and the and the stage crew is working their butts off so it's it's really kind of fun to see them when we first did it you know there's very little rehearsal time to rehearse the changeovers and um, and the play was, you know, five hours and 15 minutes, and they've gotten it down to four hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> so, um, really because they've just been so good at the changeovers and, and, and doing their job. And then Rochelle Garnier was, uh, uh, is the composer for the play, and Rochelle is this wonderful singer-songwriter um, who has a, a, an uncanny way of writing um, very stylistic, kind of nostalgic sounding songs, and yet making them present and modern, um, uh, so that they're not drenched in uh, in style and nostalgia, but actually um, really alive in this moment. So I thought she would be great as a composer, and I think it was the it was the right decision. She's she's was in, she wrote some beautiful music for it, um, and was a, a hoot to collaborate with, and. Uh, and Lindsay Davis is the costume designer for this production, um, and Lindsay is, has created incredible, um, just, uh, just delicious uh, costumes. Uh, it's hard to. Um, the aesthetic is so, um, so much more polished than what I'm used to working with because I usually say to my uh, designers, I say, you know, um, I want, I want the aesthetic to be like uh, the float. Um, in the parade that won the big prize, but that wasn't sponsored by a bank. You know, it was the one that the community got together and created. And that usually means, and usually my budget is pretty low in, in creating my work. Um, so uh, 
it usually means that everything is kind of like haphazard and but but in the most divine um, creative way and uh, and Lindsay's the first uh, costume designer that I've worked with who comes from the Broadway tradition you know where things are clean and polished and so what we did with Lindsay is we used that his ability to do that but we also um, encouraged him and and he went with it whole hog to allow things to be a little rough around the edges so we, we in some ways we get the best of both worlds and in, in, um, in the costume designs um, because they're so mm, they're just so they're so like they're so every, like the 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 silhouettes are so glorious on those flower costumes um, and uh, and yet he's al he's allowed them to be like kind of rough um, which is divine um, so those are some of the collaborators and we had just, uh, just gorgeous other collaborators as well the magic theater has been a, a great collaborator and it's been a great joy to um, to be a part of the legacy here, um, which is old and vast, and um, and has it has a strong tradition of creating the work um, and supporting the work that uh, that then goes on to become the status quo, but wasn't when it started. So, like Sam Shepard and David Mamet, you know, their early work was done here, and that was certainly they were doing this weird kind of language stuff like uber realism and heightened poetry and um uh, in their in their work and uh and that wasn't what people were doing at the time and now it's what everyone is doing um and so what's interesting about this play being at the magic theater now is it's it's the new thing that not everybody is doing and so i think hopefully um it will go out into the world and inspire people to then want to create new work that is not not doing what you know theater of the ridiculous hopefully it will inspire more theater of the ridiculous but um uh because we lost a whole generation to aids so uh, there aren't that many people who are working uh in this kind of um, style anymore so it would be great if it would inspire more people to go about doing that kind of work but also and i think it i think it will um and i and um but I also hope that it will inspire the new people to see, oh, there are theaters out there that um, actually are still taking chances and still doing um, new kinds of work. And, and, uh, and so that means that I can make new work and I can make big work and I can um, make messy work if I want to. And it will get supported and, and, and be validated just as much as um, the work that uh, is, we're seeing in the status quo. So um, that's an amazing thing that the Magic Theater continues to do, and um, how fantastic is that?